Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right. Hey there, everybody. Today, we are going to talk about some rideshare news. There's been a lot of things happening here at the beginning of the year. We're in the second week of January, and I'm coming to you uh, live from Bangkok, Thailand, and I'm happy to uh, share with you some of the stuff that's going on. It is a dynamic industry right now. So I've picked out six stories, and uh, we're going to go over them right now. First story. California sued over gig economy law, what Uber and Postmates say about AB5. So if you're not familiar with AB5, AB5 is a law that was passed in California, went into effect on January 1st, which basically told Uber and Lyft and Postmates that they needed to classify their drivers as employees. Now, Lyft is just ignoring it. Uber and Postmates are ignoring it, but Uber and Postmates have also sued California, saying that it ha- it is uh, unconstitutional. Uh, in a lawsuit filed in U.S. District Court in Los Angeles, Uber Technologies and Postmates, Inc., a delivery service based in San Francisco, said the law is un- unconstitutional and will, quote, stifle workers and companies in the on-demand economy. They argue that the gig economy gives its workers, who have been classified as independent contractors, opportunities to earn money when and where they want with unprecedented independence and flexibility. The lawsuit seeks an injunction blocking implementation of AB5. So isn't it interesting that Uber is saying here that um, if we are employees, they're basically saying that if we're employees, then we can't still have our flexibility. And that's not the case. I hope you all understand that. That's what Uber is saying, that if AB5 goes through, you're going to work a regular schedule and all of that, kind of a doom and gloom scenario, which is absolute BS, right? Nothing really has to change other than as employees, we would get paid a little more. uh, We would get paid overtime. We would uh, have health health benefits, uh, all these extra things, which would add to the the earnings that the drivers have in terms of the flexibility that's 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 not a non-starter that is not something that necessarily has to happen things can stay just the way they are so it's kind of a i i would call it a last gasp uh that uber is uh you know throwing everything against the wall in order to uh to try and stop this from happening and it's purely financial um, I had a, an interview with Rebecca Stack Martinez, and she estimated that if uh, Uber made us employees, we'd get about 30% more in earnings. So that's a significant amount of money. Uber doesn't want to pay it. Lyft doesn't want to pay it. Postmates doesn't want to pay it. Um, they'd rather screw the drivers, and that is what they're doing. They're trying to fight this law. So interesting uh, turn of events. Okay, next story. The 32 places Uber and Lyft drivers earn the most, according to the data. So uh, Gridwise, a smartphone app designed for rideshare drivers to increase earnings, has released a report detailing which cities Uber and Lyft drivers make the most money. So I'm going to start from the bottom and we'll work our way up. So Tampa, Florida is ranked number 32. The average driver there makes $12.71 per hour. Next on the list is San Antonio. Then we go to Jacksonville, Florida. 
New Orleans, Louisiana, only makes thirteen seventy-two an hour average. Then Atlanta, Columbus, Ohio, Nashville, Tennessee, hmm. Indianapolis, Indiana. Number twenty-four is Miami, Florida. Twenty-three, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Twenty-two, Houston, Texas. Twenty-one, Charlotte, North Carolina. Twenty, Las Vegas. $15.77. So we've gone up about $3. Dallas, Texas. San Diego is number 18. 17, Los Angeles. Big, big city. They're only ranked 17. Kansas City is next. Austin, Texas. Then we go to Phoenix, Arizona. Number 13 is Chicago, Illinois. Detroit, Michigan. Baltimore, Maryland. Okay, now we're down to the top 10. Philadelphia, you can make almost $18 an hour there. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the same. Washington, D.C., about the same. Denver, Colorado, about the same. We're in the $18 range. The number six, it jumps up to almost $21. That's New Jersey. Number five is Boston. Number four, New York, right? You'd expect New York to be up there. Number three is San Jose at $22. This is interesting. Number two is Seattle, Washington. So I think if you're looking at how much you could make and then how much it would cost you to live, I would think that's the biggest gap is uh, Seattle, Washington. So you could actually pocket more money uh, by working in Seattle because the cost of living is so much less than our number one, which is the Bay Area. So in Seattle, you can make $22.67. And in the Bay Area, you can make $23.28. So again, that's the average driver. I can tell you, me as a driver in the Bay Area, if I'm not making $30 an hour, I am doing something really wrong. And usually I'm making between $35 and $40 an hour. And that's just gross earnings. That's what, you know, Lyft and Uber pay us. And then you've got to subtract your expenses from that. All right. So interesting, not too surprising. We always knew San Francisco was the highest uh, paid area. Um, I'm surprised that Seattle, uh, Seattle is above New York. Uh, but those are the numbers. Okay, next story. Next story is all about balancing profits and human dignity in the gig economy. And uh, this article really is talking about how there are some companies in the tech field that are able to you know, deliver a good product and treat their employee, treat the people who work for them as employees. Uh, they don't have to uh, pay them less, treat them as independent contractors. They actually put money back into their people, and uh, it's worked out really, really well for them. So what I wanted to, sh to read you is this right now. Okay, so here's what I want to read. Despite a growing sentiment that gig economy workers warrant more rights, Uber executive Nicholas Valentino was recently quoted describing his drivers not as employees, but as independent companies. They are not Uber drivers, he said. They're independent third-party transportation providers. Well, this may be technically correct, although it's not in California now. He manifests a glaring insensitivity to the challenges of the drivers who make Uber work, particularly in light of movements like those in California to establish basic rights for gig economy workers. While companies ranging from DoorDash to Lyft have lined up to oppose such regulations, we offer a counterpoint. So this is an article written by The Hill. What if we could generate profit while treating employees with dignity? What if we could innovate socially and economically at the same time? There are companies that are doing this, that are harnessing the power of data without treating people as if they were disposable. For example, one U.S.-based data-driven corporate relocation company is hiring on-demand employees who receive transparent wages and receive full health benefits. Two transportation companies, one offering electronic mini-pod taxis based in Stockholm, and the other, a U.S.-based data-driven vehicle service, use the value generated from these technologies not to expand the workforce to a vast peer-to-peer -peer network, but to make drivers and mechanics more efficient and to educate, train, and retrain them as employees. These counterpoints to the traditional expansive peer-to-peer -peer gig service are not a panacea. They do, not, they do present challenges, but they also show a different path for companies going forward. They offer a way of thinking about human dignity and an on-demand workforce that is not only capitalistic, but compassionate. We believe these ideas can coexist. 
that profit does not have to exploit human beings, and that capitalism can be both socially and environmentally conscious. So that's a really uh, progressive and, uh, I think, wonderful uh, take. So I highly recommend this article. Uh, it's uh, The Hill, and it's called Balancing Profits and Human Dignity in the Gig Economy. See, what's happened is um, with this gig economy, companies like Uber and like Lyft, um, by calling us independent contractors, they're able to reduce their expenses. And that has allowed them to uh, take the money they have and grow and grow and grow as fast as possible. But it's not working for drivers. Some drivers, sure, it's working. I worked for four years, it worked for me. But the vast majority of drivers are working really hard and they're not making that much money. And while it might fill in for a little bit here and there, it's basically unsustain unsustainable for most people. And it doesn't have to be. And in California, that's why we now have AB5, which is kind of grinding Uber and Lyft to you know, take some responsibility for all of these people that are working with them or for them, however you want to say it. Okay, next article. Three reasons, three reasons Uber and Lyft will keep sliding in 2020. This is the Motley Fool. And this is uh, regarding the sliding means sliding in, in terms of their stock price. So both Uber and Lyft notoriously just sucked at the whole stock market game. They started very high. And by the end of the year, they were both very low. And uh, this article says uh, three reasons why it's going to continue to get worse. Uh, number one, the regulatory environment isn't getting any better. So that's what we've been talking about. AB5 um, is just making it harder for these companies to uh, do what they've been doing. They're going to have to increase their expenses to accommodate the drivers. Uh, two, the financials are still ugly. So Uber and Lyft really haven't figured out how to make money yet. So that's not going to improve quickly. And then number three, investor sentiment is changing. So there used to be what I would call the Amazon uh, paradigm, which is, you know, you're so big, you're going to figure out how to make money. Uh, but then in this article, it points to the uh, WeWork IPO, which uh, really started to kind of deteriorate that paradigm. And with Uber and Lyft starting out really positive and then sliding, uh, investors are not uh, willing to be as optimistic about these companies. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Hard to say, but uh, the Motley Fool, who I, I respect most of what they what they write about, uh, they think uh, it's going to continue to get worse and buying Uber and Lyft stock is a, a, a not a, a winning situation. Okay. This was big news. It came out this week. Um, we did a big story on it on the Rideshare Guy. Uh, this article is from The Points Guy. Uh, Uber no longer providing riders with upfront fixed prices in California due to new law. So because of AB5, Uber is uh, changing some of, the, some of the ways that drivers are uh, presented with information. And they're doing that to give the appearance of uh, the drivers being independent contractors. So um, less things are being hidden from the drivers. We're seeing things a little clearer in terms of how we're going to get paid, um, in terms of how we're getting paid on, on surge. And basically, they are doing this because they want to be able to say when they have their day in court that uh, the drivers have uh, more control, more control, and therefore they should be independent contractors. So um, I wrote a whole article on this. By the time this podcast comes out, that article will already have come out. And in that article, I share uh, why why Uber is doing this. And I ask the question, will Lyft follow suit? And I, I wholeheartedly believe Lyft will follow suit and, and make similar changes because they're in the same boat as, as Uber. So big changes. Drivers now can see, you know, the destination when they get the ping. And... Um, now we're paid 75% uh, of whatever the driver, whatever the passenger pays, right? And instead of getting paid some weird amount of surge, we're now paid the multiplier surge like we used to. Um, and this is all in an effort to give the drivers more transparency, uh, more control, so that they can argue, Uber and Lyft in court, that um, 
we are independent contractors. All right. I don't think it's going to work, but we shall see. Okay. We're going to end up with kind of a funny story here. Some woman named Gabriel Union, uh, who is uh, uh, famous for being in a show called Being Mary Jane. She's an actor. Uh, Gabriel Union kicks up a stink with pooping Uber driver story. This, of course, is the Huffington Post. So she put this on Twitter, this woman named Gabriel Union. And uh, here's, here's what she put in Twitter. Trying to be responsible and use Uber, and our driver asked to use our bathroom. 15 to 20 minutes later, and then it's got a green sour face, dude dropped a deuce. <laughs> I'm pleased we clearly have a home and available reading material that screams, come in, get comfortable, and drop the kids off at the pool. Welcome to 2020, folks. And then she's got the, uh, the little poop emoji and the little hands clapping emoji. Uber, Uber support responds, that definitely should not uh, be happening uh, send us a DM with your email address or phone number so our team can follow up with you. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I just think it's pretty funny. Uh, so the driver uh, asked to use the bathroom and he went into this uh, nice house and he did his he did his business. He did his business. He dropped a deuce. He uh, smelled up the bathroom. And then he left. And uh, I got to say, uh, not cool. Not cool at all. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I got, I've got Gabriel Union's back on this one. Um, that's a bit embarrassing for us drivers to have this guy go in and do that. And um, <laughs> it's just funny. So, all right. That's a wrap. That's the news. All the news that's fit to print. Uh, fist bump to all you drivers out there. Y'all rock. It's uh, great to uh, have you listening. I honor you. You're doing great things out there, driving people around. Thank you for sharing your journey with me here in the dojo. Be safe out there. This is Nomad Jay. Really, I'm a nomad. I am in Bangkok, Thailand, saying this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.